Okay, so what I've done for this part of the question is just drawn a rough sketch of what we're given. We're given this plane inclined at 20 degrees then to the horizontal, two points A and B 50 meters apart, and we've got this particle of mass 30 kilograms, which starts at rest at A and then is dragged up the plane by a force parallel to the plane and then comes to rest again at B. And we've got to find out then the work done by that force that's dragging it up the plane against a resistance. Now the plane is rough so we know that there is friction involved, it opposes motion so it's going to act down the plane and I'm going to mark that in. It would normally be mu r where r is the contact force, the perpendicular contact force, we'll mark that in as r newtons. So the frictional force would be mu r and we're told that mu is a quarter so I'm going to write in a quarter r newtons there. We've got the weight of this particle acting downwards, 30 g, mg, 30 g newtons. And then we've got this force that is dragging the particle up the plane from A to B. I'm going to mark that in, say, as P, P newtons. So what is that work done by this force that's dragging the particle up the plane? Well, that's for that work done, I should say, is going to be equal to the gain in potential energy and plus the work done against the friction here. So when it comes to the gain in gravitational potential energy, we need to work out the height that it's been raised between A and B. We'll mark that in, say, as this height in here. Let's mark it in as in green here, okay? This height here, we'll call it H. Now, to get H, we need to think of a right angle triangle in here. This angle will be 20 degrees, same as the angle of the plane. So, we can get H by using basic trigonometry, the sine of 20 degrees equals the opposite side, h in this case, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 50. So by basic trigonometry, we then have that the sine of 20 degrees equals h over 50. And if we rearrange this, we end up with that height being 50 sine 20 degrees. I won't work that out, we'll just leave it like that for the time being. So when it comes to the gain in gravitational potential energy, let's just mark that in here, the gain in gravitational potential energy. The formula is mgh. So we can substitute our values in there. We've got the mass then, which is 30. We've got G, which is 9.8, and we've now got H. H is 50 sine of 20 degrees. And if we work this out, what we get as an unrounded value is 5,027.6961, and so on, joules. Okay, so that's the gain in gravitational potential energy. There's also work done then against this frictional force here as we drag the particle up the plane. So the work done against that friction, okay, is going to be equal to one quarter R, the force here, multiplied by the distance moved. So it's going to be a quarter R multiplied by that distance of 50. The only problem is we don't know what R is. So we can get R quite easily by resolving perpendicular to the plane. Remember this angle in here is the same as the angle of the slope here, 20 degrees. So if we were to resolve perpendicular to the plane, we've got that R minus 30G cos 20 degrees 
equals 0. And rearranging that gives us that R equals 30G cos 20 degrees. So I can substitute this into this equation up here. And so therefore I've got the work done, let's just put it as WD, against friction is going to equal one quarter then the coefficient of friction times R 30G cos 20 and then multiplied by the distance that force travels which is 50 meters. And if you work that one out you get 3,453.3703 and so on. And that would be measured in joules. So when it comes to the total work done in dragging this particle up the plane from A to B, it's going to be equal to the sum of this value and the gain in gravitational potential energy. So we can finish then by saying therefore the total work done okay, equals well, we'll start with this value here, 5027.6961 and so on, plus this value up here, 3453.3703 and so on. Just get that squeezed in there. If you work that out, you'll get 8481.066 and so on. And you can round that to some suitable degree of accuracy, say three significant figures, and you've got 8,480 joules to three significant figures, 3SF. Okay?